At my first job out of college, there used to be one of those employee of the month boards right when you walked into the office. You know those boards where they usually post a picture of the star employee for everybody else to see, the employee that's done a bunch of good work for the organization. Well, this board at my first job after college was deep sea themed. So all of the star employees had their pictures posted on paper cutouts of like fish and lobsters and octopuses and things like that. It was pretty silly. But I distinctly remember this board because I remember how badly I wanted to get that an employee of the month award. I wanted to get my picture taken. I wanted it to go up on the wall for all to see because I wanted to be recognized by my peers. It was important for me to look good in the eyes of others and to feel like I had accomplished something. And when I look back on it now, my desire to look good in the eyes of others and to feel like I had achieved something on my own accomplishments would have put me squarely in the woe category of this morning's gospel lesson. Woe to you when people speak well of you. Woe to you when you desire to get your picture placed on a paper cutout of an octopus. <laughs> This morning's gospel lesson is part of what is known as the Sermon on the Plain. And it's sometimes overshadowed by the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew's gospel, where Jesus delivers the nine Beatitudes, or the nine blessings. But Luke's account of all this, Luke's version, is a little bit different. In Luke's version, Jesus only delivers four Beatitudes, or four blessings, and he also includes four woes. So it starts out by going, blessed are you who are poor, blessed are you who are hungry, blessed are you who are weeping, and blessed are you when people hate you and exclude you and revile you. But woe to you who are rich, woe to you who are full, woe to you uh, who are laughing, and woe to you when people speak well of you. Now, also unique to Luke's account of all of this is the place where Jesus delivers the sermon from. It's not from atop a mountain like in Matthew's account, but rather it's from a level place, a plain. And it's interesting to note that some of the prophets from the Hebrew scriptures, guys like Jeremiah and Daniel and Joel and even Zechariah, when they talk about level places, they refer to places of pretty miserable stuff, uh, fields where there's corpses and idolatry and suffering and misery and mourning and hunger. So when these old prophets talk about level places, they're not talking about very happy places. And yet, this is where Jesus goes to be among the crowd and to deliver his sermon. And just picture it. Jesus comes down to this level place where he's around this great crowd of people with diseases and who have unclean spirits. And it's in the midst of this great crowd as people are trying to press in on him to touch him so that they might be healed that Jesus looks directly at his disciples and he says or gives the beatitudes and the woes. And it's significant to note that Jesus specifically directs this sermon to his disciples. Now, sure, the other people who are around could hear what Jesus is saying, but Jesus directs his message to the disciples. Meaning that this isn't, this isn't supposed to be some moral code binding all of society. As one scholar puts it, this is not a theologically conceived attempt to uh, summarize the Christian message in its entirety, but rather the Sermon on the Plain is a call to a life of discipleship. The Sermon on the Plain is a call to action, to the disciples, to the church, and to us. And the difficult part about the kind of discipleship 
that Jesus calls us to is that it often is at odds with the ways of the world. The Sermon on the Mount in our society, in our culture, would probably be the other way around, wouldn't it? Blessed are you who are rich. Blessed are you who are full. Blessed are you who are laughing. Blessed are you when people speak well of you. But woe to you who are poor and hungry and weeping. Woe to you when people uh, exclude you and revile you and hate you. But the Sermon on the Plain unequivocally turns the ways of the world upside down. Jesus speaks of God's blessing on the poor, the reviled, and the humiliated. And he warns against the very human desire for recognition, to look good in the eyes of others, and the desire for wealth, the things that can have the power to draw us away and cut us off from God and from one another. Those things in our lives, Jesus is giving, uh, when he talks about those woes, he is giving a word of caution about prioritizing those things in our lives that can separate us and cut us off from recognizing our dependence on God. Usually those things that are not lasting, like possession and wealth. He's warning against those things that we sometimes use to hide our vulnerability, to hide our dependency. Those things that give us an illusion that we are dependent on no one else but ourselves. Things like a fancy job title or belonging to the right kind of clubs or getting into the right kinds of schools. And Jesus' warning are hard for us to hear. At least they're hard for me to hear. Because our culture, our society constantly tells us that we can and that we should avoid our sense of vulnerability and of dependency. Yet it is precisely in our vulnerability, in our brokenness, in our times of need that Jesus meets us. It's in those moments that we recognize our dependence on something much larger than ourselves. The poor, the hungry, those who are weeping are open to the kingdom of God because they are not preoccupied with prosperity and self-sufficiency. Just yesterday, uh, I woke up to the news, as I'm sure many of you did too, that there had been another mass shooting. This one here in Illinois, about 45 miles south of Arlington Heights. Five people were killed, six including the gunman. This past week also marked the one year anniversary of the mass shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Florida, where 17 people were killed. And while I can't even begin to imagine the trauma and the suffering of those victims of gun violence and of mass shootings, I can't help but think of the teenagers and the parents who lived through the nightmare in Parkland and who saw their classmates and their loved ones murdered and who are now working for gun control and legislation that would prevent other people from being killed in mass shootings. Some of those people have been falsely accused as crisis actors, and they've been reviled and ridiculed because they, by their opponents because they've taken a stance against weapons, against guns, that are specifically designed to kill people. Guns that give some a false sense of security and self-sufficiency. This morning's gospel lesson tells us that Jesus is amidst the poor, the reviled, and the persecuted. It tells us that this is a call to discipleship, that we are called to take a critical look at those things in our lives that have the power to separate us from God and from the rest of humanity. 
Things like our desire to look good in the eyes of others, for wealth, to get our picture posted up on the employee of the month board. God desperately desires relationship with us and doesn't want anything to get in the way. Jesus is often found in those level places of our lives and of the world, those places of vulnerability, those places of need. Jesus goes right to the middle of the mess and the suffering of human nature, looks directly at us as his followers, and calls us to join him right there on the level plane. Amen.